Hello students, in this module we are going to learn about soil conservation in India and also in general. So let's begin. So the first one here is contour plowing. This is the first method we are discussing regarding soil conservation. But before we discuss the methods, let's, let's learn what is conservation of soil. So soil conservation means to protect the soil from being eroded or from being exhausted. Soil is eroded by different agents and soil is exhausted. We call it soil exhaustion. When unscientific methods of farming are used, then the soil loses all its nutrients and becomes infertile. So the basic motive of conservation of soil is to protect the soil from erosion as well as from exhaustion. Now students here is a picture showing the first method that is contour plowing. It looks like terrace farming. You must have heard and seen the pictures of terrace farming. So in terrace farming or in contour uh, plowing, uh, the land is cut down, it cut out into different steps. And on the steps, plants or trees or crops are grown so that they grip the soil tight and the soil is not uh, eroded. They are also cut into steps so that the power of the water can be reduced and like this the soil erosion can be minimized. So this is how contour plowing and terrace farming works. Now the word contour. Contour means uh, the imaginary lines that join places with equal height. So children here these steps they follow the contour of the land means each step is joining the land with equal height and as uh, here, cropping is done means either crops or plants are grown so this is known as contour plowing. It looks similar to terrace farming but in case of contour plowing contours are followed to make the steps whereas in terrace farming it is not necessary to follow the contours of the land. Students, this is another picture you can see contour plowing can be even done in uneven areas. It is not necessary to be done in hilly areas. Uh, it is an important method to check soil erosion in the hill slopes, definitely. Plugging the gullies and ravines in dissected areas and ravine land. And this is a very good method to check soil erosion. So even uh, in case of gully erosion can be checked by contour plowing. Now the next type of farming as we have discussed just now, terrace farming. So students you can see clearly in the hilly areas the land has been cut into steps and uh, they, it is not necessary they follow the contour and you can see on the top of the each step crops and grasses are grown even sometimes plants are grown so that they can grip the soil and the soil does not get eroded. So this is how it works. Now the next type is strip cropping. Children you can see different colors here. Actually different crops are grown in different strips so that if certain nutrients are taken by one crop that can be brought by the brought back by the another crop. And the nutrients which uh, one crop will take um, uh, this crop will take will be brought uh, again by the another crop. For example this is crop 1, crop 2 and crop 3. So the nutrient which is taken away by crop 1 can be brought back by crop 2 or the nutrients which is taken by crop 3 can be brought back by crop 1 or 2. So like this they balance the nutrient in the soil and this is the purpose of strip cropping. It is a highly scientific method of cropping so that the fertility of the land can be preserved and the land can be or the soil can be protected from exhaustion. So the next you can see the picture of strip cropping children alternate bands are there you can see a particular crop is uh, grown in alternate bands and in between there is some another uh, crop is grown or vegetables can be grown, grown so that the fertility of the soil can be maintained. Now children the next method of conserving soil is formation of or uh, we can say growing of shelter belts. So shelter belts are actually trees that are grown around an agricultural field or especially around arid means desert areas so that the expansion of deserts can be stopped. These trees reduces the speed of wind 
and because of this the sand cannot be uh, taken further beyond the desert area and desertification can be controlled. Even in agricultural field the uh, speed of running water can be reduced and erosion can be minimized for that reason shelter bells trees are planted. Children trees are even planted uh, for providing shade as well as from protecting the area from getting eroded, the soil from uh, being eroded. Children, this is another picture you can see how the plants are planted uh, all around the agricultural field so that the erosion, the uh, agents of erosion can be discouraged, their speed can be minimized. This is another picture, you can see the shelter belts out here, the trees in a row actually forming the shelter belt. Now children, the next method we can say is construction of dam. So dams are constructed to provide a support means to channelize the river water. I will draw and show you. If this is the river, river a dam is constructed uh, because when there is heavy rainfall, the river will get over flooded. So water can be channelized means there are gates in the dam and these gates can be gradually opened and then water is allowed down slope. If all the gates is, are opened or if the dam is not there then huge amount of water will come down slope and it can cause flood. It can even cause soil erosion because when flood comes then the soil is also eroded. So to a very great extent dams help in uh, preventing soil erosion. You can see students these are the gates. So some gates are opened uh, at a time during when there is a lot of water accumulated to prevent from flood as well as from soil erosion. Next method is a very scientific method that is controlled grazing. Now children what is grazing? Grazing is a method of taking the cattle to green field so that they can eat the grass, they can feed on the grass and they can uh, for their survival, for their food. But when in a particular area, you can see in this picture, almost all the grasses are over. And if they will continue grazing in the same field, then what will happen? One day all the greenery will be over and the land will be left fallow and there will be no support uh, to prevent soil erosion. So if there is heavy rainfall or fast moving wind, it can easily erode the top layer of the soil and the soil will become infertile. But if in an, an, uh, another green area uh, like grasses are less, then the cattle are shifted to another area and the area where they were grazing first, if this area is left for 10 or 15 days, then it will get time for the grasses to grow again. And then by that time this area will be vacant of lot of grasses. So this area can be abandoned and the cattle can be again shifted to area 1. So like this if alternately they switch from one area to another. This is first slope, this second slope. If for 10 days this slope was used for eating grass then next 10 days can be uh, this slope can be used. And again they can switch to this on the 21st day. And after 13, 10 more days, they can again switch back to this slope. Like this, all the slopes will get equal time for growing the grasses and there the land will never be devoid of grasses and vegetation and the soil will not be prone to erosion. So students, this is how if overgrazing is controlled, if scientifically grazing is done, then the cattle will also get their food and the grasses will also never perish. So the next best method is afforestation. So as it is said that every human being should plant a tree, so it's very true, we should plant a tree and encourage the growth of forest. So afforestation that is growing of trees or planting of trees is very important method of soil conservation. So it can be uh, individual initiative or it can be the initiative by the community to, to grow a lot of trees to encourage the growth of forest. So thank you very much students. That's all in this module.